back. This is the Dear Woke Christian Podcast. My name is Jason. This podcast is geared toward those who profess to be woke, who embrace critical race theory or social justice or believe that Black Lives Matter is a valid organization. My hope, my prayer is that we will provoke you to dig into God's word and to compare everything that you've been told, what you bought or maybe even sold to God's word and that you reject anything that doesn't line up with his truth. Uh, today, we have an interesting one. Um, we have a gentleman here talking about colorblindness, very similar to what we talked about when we spoke with Robin D'Angelo. However, I really want to dig into this one because this person professes to be a believer. I don't doubt that this person is a believer. I don't doubt that this person loves Christ. I do want him to consider, however, what he's teaching in light of the gospel, in light of the good news, the teaching of Christ. So let's go ahead and look at Romans chapter 12, as we always like to do. We like to jump in and get started in the scriptures. So let's look at Romans chapter 12, verses three through eight. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of the faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individual, individually member one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them, if prophecy, in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, and the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, and the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. And I just want to start out by looking at this person is going to reference the different gifts of the body. And I just want to read, like, where is he getting that from? So let's jump now to 2 Corinthians 5, 16. And we're going to read through the whole, um, through the end of the chapter, as I always encourage you to do. Feel free, jump in and read the whole thing. This is the Ministry of Reconciliation. We've talked about this before, but there's a reason why we want to look at it today. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We've talked about the ministry of reconciliation, racial reconciliation before. And I just want to point that out again, that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation and reconcile others back to God. Let's go to Galatians 5, 22. So this is the uh, keeping step of the spirit, the very famous fruits of the spirit or fruit of the spirit. All right, so verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. So we see that if we are in Christ, whether we have high melanin or low melanin, it doesn't matter. If we are in Christ, we should be exemplifying the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control as, as believers. Then Ephesians 4, 8. Now, this is the unity in the body passage. Um, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling 
to which you have been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over and through and is over and through all and in all. But grace was given to me, or rather, was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he first descended into the lower regions of the earth? He descended, is he who descended is the one who also ascended far above the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, the teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature, the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and care by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful shame, schemes, rather speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Today, we're going to look at something, and we're going to talk about the unity of the body of Christ. And this gentleman is talking about colorblindness. And we've talked about colorblindness before, again, with Robin D'Angelo. Um, and I really want, I really don't want to sound like I'm bashing this fellow because he is a brother. I believe he is a brother in Christ. This, if you know William Branch, William Branch is the hip hop, Christian hip hop artist named The Ambassador. Hence why I read the passage, the, uh, our ministry of reconciliation and how we are Christ's ambassadors to tell others to be reconciled to God. But let's look at what, how he approaches the idea of color blindness. In what ways is like, the idea of color blindness just toxic to racial justice? Right. Well, it's interesting. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that when people say that, they think they mean something good. I mean, they mean something good in their hearts. They think they're saying something good because what they mean is they don't want the color to be the determining factor by which they do something or not. So they mean color. Let's stop right there. That is true. That is what, when, when I say colorblindness, when other people say colorblindness, they're saying that they're not looking at you as a black man and determining that because you're a black man, I am not going to hire you or because you're a black man, I'm going to think you're a thug or because you're a black man, I'm going to think anything negative about you. This catalog is a wonderful musical catalog. All right. So I need to invest in him because he's put out good product because he's been faithful to the Christian rap game because he's, uh, he's been a producer. He's been on in different uh, collaboration projects and such like that. Not just because he's black, but because of his content of what he's done. I don't see what's wrong with that. And please, I'm going to rewind a little bit just to let him spin it out again, because he's about to undercut everything he's, he's saying right now. He's going to undercut it. Line in terms of this is the basis on Rebecca, I'm sorry about that. that when people say that, they think they mean something good. I mean, they mean something good in their hearts. They think they're saying something good because what they mean is they don't want the color to be the determining factor by which they do something or not. So they mean colorblind in terms of this is the basis on which I'm doing this, that, or the other. But what they don't that is the correct. That is correct. Don't realize is that subconsciously that feeds into they don't see color and therefore learn to actually appreciate what it is and what things you need to do in light of the fact that it is. Uh, that, that undercut whatever he just said. Oh, because. I don't think anybody's actually saying that they don't see color. 
in the fact that they don't like, for example, like I've truly only seen black and white. Or I see clear because black and white. And nobody's saying that. What they are saying, however, is that they're not judging you by that. And he said that and then he undercuts it with a very elementary example. And it's actually going to get worse. Uh, so in other words, I, if I don't see your color, I don't respond again with the appreciation I'm supposed to. Uh, all of us go to our closets and put together outfits based on colors. You know, the, the, the idea that I don't see that a, a white person would say, and actually he's sitting at the table with a white man. So the white man might say, or the light, uh, less melanated brother might say, hey, I don't see color. But you go to your closet and you pick out some blue jeans and a green shirt. Those are not the same things. Come on, man. You say, hey, man, this goes with this. Oh, man, this looks beautiful when this goes together. That was we appreciate color and its beauty. We even appreciate it in terms of how it fits in context. You know, so you don't go to a funeral usually in rainbow. You know what I'm saying? You don't go to funerals in rainbow, but I've seen f people with funerals that are not black and sullen. So what's that mean? <laughs> I don't understand. Like, you're not, these are not distinctions. These are not differences and they're not apples to apples comparisons rather maybe that's probably a better way of saying it these are not apples to apples comparisons because somebody says they don't see color as it relates to a black and white man don't mean they're gonna wear a rainbow to a dog on funeral that's not the same thing and somehow you just make a correlation hey in this funeral these are more appropriate you know then it's a sunny day you know and you go out and you go into miami and you don't go out there in corduroys you know all black corduroys you know and so but again, like that, that's a functional problem. That's not, I mean, you gave examples of color, um, you know, picking out an outfit, you example of what to wear to a funeral, that's cultural, okay? And then you're talking about what to wear in the beach in Miami, that's functional. That ain't got nothing to do with whether or not I pick a, a, a less melanated pianist or a melanated pianist to play at my kid's birthday party. I mean, that doesn't matter. Come on, man, we can do better than this, brother. Somebody say, hey, man, I like those colors on you. Oh, you look good in pastels. In other words, we see color, we okay. appreciate color, and we relate to it properly. And that's Nobody's what we're disagreeing. aiming for. We're aiming for people seeing the diversity that God has created, appreciating it, celebrating it, and relating, into it, relating to it in such a fashion. When you... Nobody is saying that we don't. That's the thing I... I I, I don't think he's picking up. Nobody's saying like, oh, if you have a, let's, let's use the, the infamous um, uh, multi-ethnic church. Nobody is saying that you don't celebrate. and be like, man, your church, you have different people here. And it, it does change the environment. Nobody's saying that that's not reality. So just because it's a, hey, because we have different people groups here at this church, we're not going to say, oh, well, because you're black, we expect you to be a singer. Or because you're this, we expect you to be in the kitchen cooking. Like, come on, man, that's insane. But on the same note, if you decided to be a singer, if you did decide to work in a particular area of ministry, they're not going to discriminate against you because of that. So, oh, no, 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 you're black. You should only be uh, playing the drums. Or, oh, no, no, you're, you're white. You should be a pastor. Come on, man, nobody's saying this stuff. Think about the fact that, at least in our country, uh, color was the basis of making so many decisions. It was wrong, but it was. It was wicked. It was evil. And that's in the past. We're not doing that today. He's about to give some pretty salacious examples. They're not things we're doing today, though. Those things have been done away with, both legislatively, culturally, um, um, every, they're not acceptable. They're not appropriate. Watch what he says. So our history is rooted in having to continue to work through uh, the, the repercussions, a lot of it, the damage that happened when people's bathroom was determined Restroom. by their race. Restroom. Are we doing that today? No, we're not. So that's done with. That, that history is done and we fixed it. It's been re rectified. It was wicked and evil and we've dealt with it. So we don't need to keep beating each other up over the head because at one point, because I don't, there's not many people, I know for this young man right here, he didn't experience that. He's a little bit younger than myself. So he ain't experienced that. And I live in the South. Just saying. Okay, go. It's people's 
spouse would have been determined by their nobody, race. Who nobody they could address a certain way would be determined nobody just by their, their, their ethnicity, their color, I should That's say. true. That's true. Um, and we have, we have, those sins have been fixed. Those sins have been rectified. There's no reason to keep rehashing them. They've already been dealt with. That's all I'm saying. And so I'm, I'm with you. I think that we want people to get a little more precise with their language and understand that you have not learned in a way to rightly relate to color. In Is that what we were taught in the scriptures? Is that what we were told? Is that the unity in the body? Is that the unity in the body to say, hey, you don't know color. You, have, you weren't raised in color. What does that even mean? Because keep in mind, people with less melanin actually have color. Let's just be, since we're just being ridiculous and silly, people of less melanin, this fellow right here, He's sitting there head nodding with you. He has color. <laughs> he has color. I'm, I'm just saying, like, he has melanin. He just doesn't have a lot. What are we doing? Like, again, this is, we've, we've gone into Insaneville. And, and I, I don't believe that either of these guys are, wrong, are trying to be wrong. I'm not believing that they're out here trying to be de deceptive and lead people astray. I don't even think they're trying at all. I just want them to think like, hey, what we're doing, we're, we're continually live action role playing this as if, we're, as if we have segregated bathrooms or restrooms, I mean restaurants today, as if that's the case, which it's not. Okay. Understand that you have not learned color. What does that mean? In a way to rightly relate to color. How? In light of the fact that color is a reality, God made it as a distinction to mm. Hold on. God did make colors. God did make ethnic, ethnic groups, which I want to give him kudos. He doesn't use race a lot. He uses color. Interesting. But our ethnicities are, once we're in Christ, our ethnicities are no longer a, a factor. I'm just saying. No Jew, no Greek. Come on. We've been reconciled. Make distinctions. Again, not the distinctions that most people or some people have used it to make distinctions, which bathroom you go to mm -hmm. and who you marry. No, no, no. That's not why he made different colors. But it was to reflect a colorful mosaic of what he does. And he's distributed. The Bible says in even the Bible, the church, God gives gifts. Sorry, one source, but everybody doesn't have the same gift. That was that's the reason why we read that about the gifts. So you could, you could, uh, I, I know what the scripture said as it relates to he gave gifts, diverse gifts, and we already read that. And I think what he's trying to say is that, you know, the different people groups are gifts to the church, which I, hey, I'm not going to argue with that. I think that's, that's a, a great way to look at it, that having different people groups is a gift. I agree. But what's more gift is Christ. Christ is our gift. Christ is our reward. And again, I think we get into some deep waters. I think we get ourselves in trouble when we try to make the externals, the way people look. Because keep in mind, James told us not to do a lot of the stuff that these people are talking about. I'm not saying that this gentleman is woke or anything of that nature. But a lot of stuff these people are talking about, James told us not to do. God is the distributor of diversity. Mm -hmm. And he's... I think God has done things. He's he's given certain things to certain people. How many of us wish if we were running a marathon, some of us might be like, man, I wish I was one of those Kenyans. I wish I was one. They seem to always win. This eat the always. It's like you, know, you think about hockey. You say, man, I wish I was. There's all kinds of things. It seems like God has distributed among Hard humanity so that we need each other for the common good. But we have to meet. We have to come together. So I want. If somebody says, I don't see color. And say, oh, let's say that we're in a situation where we're trying to get a uh, a um, a team, a cross country team. All right, there's some uh, there's a diverse group of people there, and there's enough Kenyans that you could you can get your whole team could be bogged down with Kenyans. Would you choose all Kenyans, or would you add in people who are predominantly? Do not run. They're, they're just there for fun. They're, they're just there to have a good time. Or would you select the, the Kenyans? I think we all know you would probably choose the Kenyans because you know that they have a propensity 
to be good runners. There's, uh, you would be silly not to, let's say like that. You'd be a fool not to. But see, I think we're, we're going too far. We're making too much out of this that it need not be. Because if, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Branch, I believe if you had the opportunity to select a world-class marathon team, I don't think you would have people from Iceland or slow runningville. You would probably get the people that you knew could run and you would probably know that based upon their ethnicity. So, but, so we can't do one thing with one hand and say, be mad if somebody else does it with theirs. We can't do that. So if, I don't think this is a fair assessment, but hey, let's go. I want people to understand that color is a, uh, is, is a creation of God. Yeah, absolutely. And we should understand it. That way we can rightly relate to it. I think the, the notion that we need to rightly understand it as if we don't understand. I think that's a that's a misnomer to say that, oh, well, because you have less melanin, you don't understand people of high melanin. How do you make that assessment without being inappropriate? Like, how do you say that? How do you know that I don't know? Or how do you know that you do know? I mean, come on, it cuts both ways. So, I mean, I really like the ambassador. He was a member of Cross Movement for a long time. He did several solo projects. I had all of his albums. He's an excellent Christian rap artist. And I, um, and I don't even believe that what he's saying here is as bad as some of the other things that we've heard. However, I don't think that when we consider God's word that what we what we just heard, I think when we consider in light of you know a Romans and consider in light of Galatians and Ephesians and Second Corinthians, especially the ministry of reconciliation, especially how we're called to be unified in the body, to set these little barriers of oh well you you said you don't see color, you said that you're colorblind, you are not, you cannot play with my team. I think that's that's a lap too far, and I don't believe that's what. Branch is saying, I just think that it can bef definitely be taken that way, it can be, that car can go that direction. And we can do so much better, man. We, we are unified in Christ. And it doesn't matter if God brings a, a, a wide mix of people to your church, if he brings only a few different types of people to your church, it doesn't matter. It's who God has blessed you, your church with, because those people have the gifts that God has seen fit to bring to your, your, your community, to your fellowship. So the idea and the notion that we gotta go after these certain type of people or this type of people, I think we, we're putting ourselves in some deep soup that we don't need to be in. And I believe we only create more problems. And definitely saying that you're colorblind is probably not the you know, worst thing that could go on. However, there are some pretty bad things and we've seen it, especially like in the Robin D'Angelo video, just all the things that they keep digging up, keep digging up, keep digging up. And we can fix all of that by not participating in it at all. This is Dear Woke Christian, the podcast. Again, this open letter format podcast is meant to inspire you to dig into God's word, to consider God's word and compare everything that you've been told in light of God's word. And if it doesn't line up with God's word, you reject it. If it doesn't make much of Christ, you reject it. I appreciate you all for, uh, for liking, sharing, subscribing, um, commenting down below staying with me during the premieres throughout the week. I appreciate every last one of you. I thank you for sharing these videos with persons who don't agree with me, with persons who do think that critical race theory is, is valid, who do believe in social justice. Thank you for sharing with them. I enjoy interacting and hearing what other people's thoughts are and ultimately bringing back to Christ, bring it back to the scriptures. I love that. And I appreciate you all for helping me out in that, in that respect. So, this is Dear Will Christian, and until next time, grace and peace.